Welcome to Data Lake and Storage Question Examples based on AWS Data Engineer Topics by Abilid. We offer cloud service introductions exam question explanations and practicing of real exams. Question 1. How do you process S3 CSV records with Glue crawlers with daily access to Glue catalog? Instead of IAM user role, Glue comes with a service role and it stores results in its database table. In addition, Glue job uses allocated data processing units to run on it. You best use scheduled Glue job with a table as destination and service access roles to S3 as a source. Question 2. How do you correct Lambda's S3 role permissions with a S3 get object action? Don't apply the overly permissive S3 action and don't use a bucket name reference. Not better is to use a retrieval attribute. You better use Lambda function permissions to get the object according to least privilege principle. Question 3. How do you cost-effectively realize CDC to store variable-sized semi-structured JSON in AS3 data lake? Large files aren't feasible for Lambda. Also wrong is DMS with CDC for RDS MySQL as it's limited and Aurora MySQL serverless can't even use CDC. Better is to use Glue Delta for ingestion and process data changes from existing S3 data lake files with OpenDelta.io format. Question 4. How do you efficient and secure handle PI data in an S3 data lake? Separate S3 buckets for each data type with complex handling isn't recommended. And a single bucket with a three-layer architecture doesn't segregate sensitive and non-sensitive data as uniform security policies aren't stringent enough. Most advisable is to include an S3 landing zone for initial masking or encryption. Question 5. How do you effective structure S3 buckets to process data at different ETL stages? Don't apply a flat hierarchy as handling becomes too challenging. Wrong is also to use separate buckets with costly complexity and low transfer performance. And a source-based organization complicates understanding of ETL stages. Instead you organize the ETL stages with subfolders for versioning to transform data. Question 6. How do you effectively organize S3 data lake data from different sources for optimal Athena queries? First, Glue conversion to non-columnar CSV is inefficient for large dataset queries. Spectrum's minimal transformations also isn't optimal for finding data and queries. But with S3 partitioning and conversion to columnar parquet you improve performance and costs. Question 7. How do you realize a cost-effective S3 sampling of large dataset for exploratory analysis? A Glue custom script to scan and sample each S3 object isn't most efficient. Two complex solutions are Spectrum loading full dataset to Redshift and a data pipeline with RDS with unnecessary data movement. You best use S3 Select for sampling and extraction from S3 object subset to save time and costs. Question 8. How do you realize a solution with auto-triggered S3 upload event to Lambda and robust access control? Don't use EC2 instance for custom monitoring with fixed costs. Neither engage step function orchestration for simple data transfers and Lambda polling is inefficient. In contrast, S3 event triggers Lambda in real-time and IAM roles and policies ensures proper Lambda permissions. Question 9. How do you realize low overhead auto-reporting for daily S3 file copies to S3 analysis with QuickSight and SageMaker pipelines? Manual triggered custom Lambda job is inefficient with overhead and S3 notification isn't supported by SageMaker pipeline. Better is to auto-replicate new S3 files to initiate S3 event with EventBridge's object-created rule to auto-trigger Lambda functions. Question 10. How do you realize low overhead CSV conversion to Parquet with upload triggered Lambda function? Wrong are tagged or general S3 event types and SNS processing isn't needed. Most advisable is to use the S3 object created event type for user uploading to S3 bucket. Hold on a minute. 
If you like this channel and its free content to continue, please subscribe it on the right bottom button. Question 11. How do you realize cost-efficient and highly available S3 storage solution with infrequent access after 30 days? Don't forget that S3 Glacier Deep Archive isn't immediately accessible for 12 to 48 hours. And you know that an one zone class doesn't provide high availability. Instead you use S3 standard storage for infrequent access with lower storage costs but also larger retrieval time. Question 12. How do you realize retention complying S3 data lake solution with final data deletion? To guarantee compliance don't use manual Lambda functions and EC2 custom solution is too complex. Also Macy identifies sensitive data but it doesn't manage data retention. You best use S3 lifecycle rules with transaction and expiry actions and S3 object lock governance mode to prevent deletion. Question 13. How do you realize cost-effective multi-ingest to S3 data lake with 3MTH Redshift BI yearly analysis and non-accessed archive? Ingesting S3 data to Redshift is infeasible. Archived 3-month data can't be queried by Spectrum and Redshift can't directly unload to S3 Glacier. In contrast, you unload to S3 via Spectrum and you use most cost-effective S3 Glacier for 12-month data. Question 14. How do you realize cost-effective S3 lifecycle with ad hoc SQL with 12-hour access after 3 years and deletion after 10 years? For such known access patterns you don't select S3 intelligent tiering. An S3 Glacier access is more than 12 hours and it can't be directly accessed by most services. Better is to use S3 lifecycle policies based on predictable usage patterns. Question 15. How do you realize cost-effective high available S3 storage lifecycle with different retentions and access patterns? One zone is insufficient for high availability and Glacier Flex retrieval is too costly. For this use case, you best apply the high available S3 standard and frequent access with transition to deep archive as the cheapest archiving. Question 16. How do you realize cost-effective S3 multi-part uploads with auto-delete of incomplete uploads after 7 days? S3 storage lens doesn't provide policies it provides metric analytics that you can't get anywhere else. Most advisable is to use S3 storage lens to discover incomplete multi-part uploads with S3 lifecycle to auto-abort the incomplete uploads. Question 17. How do you realize cost-effective storage lifecycles for frequent updated S3 datasets and DynamoDB transaction data and deletion? First, S3 object lock blocks deletion without minimizing costs and intelligent tiering can't delete. Also, DynamoDB GSI doesn't control lifecycles and it's not an archive. But with S3 object versioning you recover or delete old objects and DynamoDB's TTL deletes old items as well. Question 18. How do you handle secure accessed and encrypted S3 sensitive data without accidental deletion? Wrong is to apply SSE S3 which lacks KMS key management and auditing features and don't use the complex and less user-friendly S3 customer encryption keys for this case. You best use S3 bucket policies and AWS config for tracking and audits to ensure compliance and protected S3 patient records. Question 19. How do you realize an updated S3 data lake for analytics and without accidental deletion? You don't use S3 Glacier, S3 Intelligent Tiering or MFA Delete for versioning or recovering. Instead you apply S3 Object Versioning for recovering and deletion of old objects to safe costs. Question 20. How do you most efficient realize Lambda processing of large S3 files exceeding Lambda's storage limit? Infeasible are step functions, direct S3 file access or S3 API calls with its limits. Most advisable is to integrate EFS with Lambda to read and write files exceeding Lambda's storage limit. Question 21. 
How do you realize a triggered Lambda app without timeout for S3 image uploads and conversions? Memory and timeout settings or complex task splitting don't resolve when large S3 files exceed Lambda's storage limit. And additional EBS storage can't be attached to Lambda. Better is you circumvent the Lambda storage limitation with copying and processing images in EFS for consistent performance. Question 22. How do you migrate NFS file share for Lambda analysis? Migration to ephemeral local storage doesn't allow parallel Lambda operations. Additional EBS storage can't be accessed by Lambda and DynamoDB can't access NFS. You better integrate EFS with Lambda to access with all concurrently running Lambda functions with NFS. With the understanding of data lake and storage for data engineers, you are ready now for more details. We wish you further insights with Abilene videos. Mm -hmm.